It is a brutally cold evening across central and eastern Kentucky, and unfortunately, the worst is yet to come. We'll track the tumbling temperatures just ahead. It's going to be a cold morning for students waiting for a school bus. How people waiting for Lex tram buses tonight stayed warm. If we could, we'd rather have every animal in the inside where it's warm and safe. How animal control in Lexington is making sure pets are not suffering in these bitterly cold temperatures. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening. It is a dangerous night to be outside for very long. Temperatures are in the single digits, but brutal wind chills make it feel even colder than that. Dozens of schools have canceled classes for tomorrow because of the cold. Check the bottom of the screen for that list. And we've declared a first alert severe weather day. We begin our team coverage tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris. Yeah, wind chills already hitting minus 11 a little earlier in Lexington. What we're giving you just a snapshot of things. You get some gustier winds. To come through, wind chills drop uh, even lower than what we're showing. It's now down to minus 10 in Richmond, minus 14 showing up into Covington. Wind chill advisory is out for the entire bluegrass state of Kentucky into early tomorrow morning for the potential for wind chills to drop as low as minus 10 to minus 20. Already seeing those wind chills into the low end range of that particular category. And the deeper you go with those numbers, the higher the danger is for folks who are going to be outside for more than just a couple of minutes. Now, your actual thermometer in Lexington is down to three degrees right now, and it continues to tumble. Four into Frankfurt, two showing up into Covington. Everybody across the entire state into the single digits. It gets colder to our northwest. It's four below zero in Indianapolis, and we're still tapping some of that Arctic air that is to our north. So moral of the story, that three in Lexington likely to show up as we go into early tomorrow morning with a negative sign in front of that at around one below zero. Focus of the forecast is on a lot of winter weather that shows up. Yes, we know we've got the dangerous wind chill tonight, but guys coming up, I'm gonna show you how the dangerous wind chills may try to return later this week into the start of the weekend. Then a lot more winter weather in the seven-day forecast when I come back in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we will see you then. And as we mentioned, many school districts have already canceled classes for tomorrow, but Fayette County is not one of them. Fayette County school leaders said tonight they expect to operate on a normal schedule tomorrow. They say they felt the forecast temperatures and wind chills from the National Weather Service were not cold enough to close or delay school. We want to be very um, sensitive to the needs of the kids and um, to the experiences that they're having waiting for buses and walking to school. But at the same time, we don't want to be frivolous in terms of um, taking a, a weather day if we don't absolutely need to. Fayette County school leaders say they will continue to keep an eye on temperatures and the forecast overnight. In a statement, interim superintendent Dr. Marlene Helm said they've heard from many families about the cold weather and, quote, says there is no unanimity when it comes to winter weather decisions, end quote. So that means thousands of Fayette County students will have a cold wait for the school bus in the morning. And they'll have to bundle up to stay safe, as we've been saying. Garrett Weimer talked to some folks at a Lextran bus stop tonight about how they try to stay warm while waiting on a bus tonight. He's live to continue our first alert weather team coverage. Garrett? Yeah, guys, no surprise that it's cold out here and getting colder. It's not a night that you want to be outside myself included, but some people I talked to tonight at bus stops here around town say for them, there was just no way around it. If you're out and about, you better bundle up. I'm going to put on my long johns, I wear my overhauls and socks, like two or three pairs of socks, and keep my head covered. Especially true for folks sitting and waiting for the bus. Several bus stops around town were pretty empty. We really didn't have to be out here. One rider I talked to said she wouldn't be out here either if she didn't have to be. But she says she just started a new job and doesn't have a car. Thankful at least for the enclosure to block some of the wind. And even more grateful when the bus comes. So what's the secret? And gloves and everything that I got to do. Antoinette Faulkner says she's keeping pretty toasty with all of her layers. Her advice for when you're at the bus stop on cold, cold nights? Stay warm. Put on everything you can put on. With the temperatures right now, that's pretty good advice, not just for tonight, 
but also for students here in Fayette County at their bus stops in the morning as well. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. All right, thank you, Garrett. Get to that car right now. now. Because the city's emergency weather plan is in effect, LexTran is offering free rides to shelters for those without transportation. On bitterly cold nights like this, you do not want to forget about your pets, especially those that are normally outside. In Lexington, you may not realize this, a city ordinance requires pets to be brought inside when it gets this cold. Tonight, Jerry Kinsko went along with Animal Control as they checked up on complaints of pets left outside. If you don't want to be out in this cold for long, then it's fair to assume that your pets don't either. So Lexington Fayette Animal Care and Control officers are out making sure that animals have the proper shelter to stay warm. When the temperatures get this low, Lexington Fayette Animal Care and Control officers get calls. 249. About pets outside during this winter blast. I mean, even though she is a husky and you know they sometimes they are bred for to withstand this type of weather. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's getting below, yeah, you know, yeah. zero. So she's definitely got to be inside in some type of environment. There are different standards for whether a dog can stay outside in single digit temps. You should have some type of organic bedding, which is hay, straw, or wood shavings. Okay, okay. Officer Timothy Brown tells us that proper bedding can go a long way. So, what we'll have to do is a dog will have to be put inside until the shelter does get. Better. But it was the same story. Well, the issue is we got a complaint, obviously, uh -huh. that they were outside without proper shelter. At every stop that we made with Officer Brown. All right, so we're done with this one. You want to go to the next one? On Wednesday night. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. But obviously, these officers would love to not have to come back out in the cold, issuing written courtesy warnings while checking on these animals. Well, I mean, if we could, we'd rather have every animal in the inside where it's warm and safe. To report animal abuse and neglect, call Animal Care and Control. We've got that contact information on WKYT.com. In Lexington, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. And if pets are in bad enough shape when officers are called to check on them, they are removed from the home for further care. The cold weather may have played a role in a power outage in Berea tonight. Berea utilities officials say about 1,200 customers lost power around 6 tonight. They blamed a problem at a substation that may have been caused by increased usage due to cold weather. They say power was restored to everyone by 7.30. And stay with WKYT for continuing coverage of the Arctic blast. You'll also find updated closings, delays, and weather information on WKYT.com. On the first day of the 2015 legislative session in Frankfort, police arrested a Kentucky state senator. Police say they charged Senator Brandon Smith with DUI after a traffic stop last night in Frankfort. They say they originally stopped Smith for speeding, but the arresting officer smelled alcohol on his breath. Police say Senator Smith blew a .088 on his breathalyzer test, which is above Kentucky's legal limit. But he was back at work today, so we asked him about the arrest. Senator Smith acknowledged it, but said his attorney advised him to stay quiet. Stuff like this is you know, sensational, and obviously it makes news. It's not very comfortable in our families, but we don't really get to choose that. Smith is a Republican from Hazard. He represents the 30th district, which covers much of southeastern Kentucky. Tonight, Governor Bashir gave his final State of the Commonwealth address, and he says Kentucky is back with a vengeance following the Great Recession. In his address, the governor said Kentucky is a national example of leadership and its success. He credits lower unemployment rates, new businesses, and health care reform. The governor says Kentucky has recovered all of its losses from the recession and moved into its highest ever economic activity. In other words, our economy had hit bottom bounced off that bottom and now has so much momentum that we bounced higher than we were when the struggle started. The governor also set out his agenda for the coming year, which includes a statewide smoking ban, requiring more children to ride in booster seats and slowing down the state's heroin problem. Investigators call it a terror attack, gunmen killing a dozen people at the offices of a French newspaper in nine minutes, a major development about the search for those responsible. And then a Central Kentucky school board makes a decision tonight about a controversial school superintendent. Tonight, investigators say that one of three men accused of attacking the offices of a French newspaper has turned himself into police, but a manhunt continues for the other two. 
Twelve people died in the attack in Paris. France's president says it was clearly an act of terror. Omar Villafranca has the update. French police converged on the town of Reims early Thursday morning, about 90 miles east of Paris. They were looking for three men wanted for the terror attack on a newspaper office that left 12 people dead. French officials identify the suspects, all Frenchmen, as 34-year-old Saeed Kouashi and his 32-year-old brother Sharif, both well-known to French police. French media outlets are reporting a third suspect, 18-year-old Hamid Murad, turned himself into police. The brazen late-morning attack filled the Paris streets with the sounds of automatic gunfire Wednesday. Inside the offices of satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo, 10 journalists were killed during an editorial meeting, including four of the biggest names in French publishing. It was a, a very terrific uh, scene uh, with, uh, with no electricity, with everything broken inside and uh, many bodies inside. The last minutes of the attack were recorded from a nearby rooftop. The gunman's final act, wounding, then executing a French police officer. Aujourd'hui, devant un choc. French President Francois Hollande called the massacre an act of terror and the gunmen would be punished. Thousands of French filled the streets to mourn the dead and the attack on free speech. And around the world, many took to social media to echo the sentiment, posting the hashtag Je suis Charlie or I am Charlie. Omar Villafranca, CBS News. Wednesday's attack was the deadliest in France in half a century. Tonight, the Montgomery County Board of Education voted not to renew the school superintendent's contract. The Mount Sterling Advocate reports the board also suspended Josh Powell with pay. Powell drew criticism last year for the district's policy that did not allow critical comments during school board meetings. Tonight, police are looking for a 13-year-old Ohio girl they think could be with a Richmond man. Police say Caitlin Walters hasn't been seen since December 30th. She lives in Wayne County, Ohio. Police think she could be with 27-year-old Walter Dunn of Richmond. He's been named a person of interest in the case. Richmond police searched Dunn's home yesterday but say it appears to be abandoned. The FBI says investigators found Dunn's car in Knoxville, Tennessee today, but the Kentucky license plate on it had been removed. Tonight, police have arrested a burglary suspect they say led them on a high-speed chase. Bergen police arrested Thomas Combs this afternoon after they say he returned to his home. They say they found him hiding under insulation in his attic. Earlier this week, police say Combs, or Thomas rather, led them on a chase in Mercer County before getting away. They think Combs broke into a home and stole jewelry before the chase. Tonight, we are tracking the investigation into a crash that damaged a building in Lexington. It happened around 6 tonight at the corner of North Broadway and West 2nd. Police say one car hit another, causing one of the cars to hit the building. No one was injured, and police say the building had minor damage. Police think one of the cars ran a red light, causing that crash.